Oh, I've been applying to so many jobs and no one is even taking time to interview me. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? This has been you before, you're definitely not alone. I remember when I was not only first starting out looking for jobs in tech, but also too, as you progress in your career, there are often times throughout your job hunting process where you have these thoughts. Is something wrong with me? Is there something I'm missing? Why is no one taking time to interview me? Is it me? Is it them? Is it the economy? What is going on? These are all common thoughts and in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through some common mistakes that you might be making when you are looking or applying to technical jobs. Now, this is something that after almost six years in the tech industry as a software developer, as someone who works in developer relations, I have been both on the side of applying to these jobs and also too on the hiring side, looking at these resumes thinking, I remember being in these people's shoes. I can't believe this person made this mistake. Why did they not include this? Why did they include this? And I'm gonna share with them all, them all with you today. Before we jump into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career related videos and enough of me talking. Let's just get into it. Okay, this might be a little controversial to hear. Well, maybe it goes against a lot of what we're told, especially when we're starting out, is you might just be applying for jobs you are underqualified for. We hear so often, or at least I did anyways, when I was starting out, and even today, apply for jobs even if you're not qualified, apply for jobs even if you're not qualified. But should you be? Now there's a fine line here. Oftentimes when we go online, especially if you are someone looking for a more junior position, you will see positions for junior software developer. You need at least three years experience. Well, how am I gonna get those three years experience if you need three years to start with? It's, it's beyond, don't even get me started on that. But the reality is a lot of times, maybe if you're not hearing absolutely anything back or very little, take a step back and look at the jobs you're applying for. If you're applying for something that's more of a junior role, how many years of experience are typically on the jobs that you're applying for? Because if you are applying for senior level or above jobs, are you really going to hear back? Now, there isn't anything wrong with applying to these jobs. I think, go for it, apply for these jobs. I know for me actually, share with you a little personal experience. When I was looking for my most recent position, there were there was a few companies where I was like, this is my dream job. I mean, I love where I work right now and it's, it's now my dream job. But you know, at the time I was like, this is a great company, this is exactly what I wanna do but they were more so for director level positions. And, and in the description, it was like, you need 10 to 15 years experience, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, I do not have 10 to 15 years experience in developer relations, but I tick off literally all the boxes they are asking for. So I just applied anyways. Now I actually got back, I think out of the three for those director positions, I actually got back two uh, interviews, but I actually, I don't think I followed through with them for various reasons. But the point being is I knew that that was a long shot. And even though I got maybe those interviews initially, I knew it was a long shot in actually securing that job. But I thought, you know what, why not apply and just see what happens? So I'm not saying don't apply for roles that are outside of your proximity for experience, but if you are applying for those roles that are typically uh, more qualified than what you are at, make sure you are also applying for roles which you're like, yes, that is in my realm, that is in my experience. Otherwise, if you're just applying for all these roles that are a bit out of reach and you're hearing nothing back, it's going to get discouraging really fast. And at the end of the day, you need to be realistic. You're not going to, we have to take our ego. I say this so much because it's so true though. You have to take your ego out of the job. You have to take your ego out of your career. Don't think you are too good to apply for a job or that you're too good for this job. Now, what I mean by that is, I remember so often, and if some of you have been watching my videos for a while, you've heard this. When I graduated from my coding boot camp, there were people who were like, I'm only working at these companies and I need to make this amount of money to start with. Do you know where the majority of those people are working now? Not in tech, because they wouldn't let themselves realize that maybe, maybe, I'm not where I think I'm at and I just need to get my foot in the door and grow from there. Whew. That was a long rant, I feel like. I'm very passionate about this subject. You're lucky you can't see my hands because they're like, I feel like I'm like Italian right now. I'm very emotional about this. You can't speak Italian just because you have a mustache. Because it's just, I don't know. I get so passionate about this because I think 
it's so easy to really screw yourself over if you're not letting your ego out the door. So, okay, tip. It's enough of that one. Moving on to the next one. The second is not tailing your resume or cover letter. Let's, let's not even pretend we all haven't done this before. I am very guilty of it too, where you are in the midst of job hunting and you're tired. Job hunting essentially is true, truly a full-time job. And sometimes you just don't want to put in 110% that day. So you send off a resume and cover letter and you don't customize it. Well, what is, what's the big deal? Why does this even really matter? Well, there are a few things. One being when you don't take the time to customize it based on what they are looking for, keywords they are including, if they are using an AI to first screen your resume, if your resume, you might be perfect for this job, but if your resume doesn't touch on the keywords and what they are talking about, you're going to get missed. And this really, really sucks. Especially too, I remember when I was hiring uh, for, what was it for? It was for a junior software developer role and the amount we would get in hundreds, hundreds a day of applications. And a lot of these would just be automated. So they would write a Python script, I'm assuming, and just like push the resume out to as many people as possible. Honestly, I don't think we even looked at any of those because it wasn't, they had no, they didn't have any care into the company or any stake in the company. They didn't care about the company. They just wanted a job. And hey, that's totally fine, but you at least have to pretend to care and play the game to make companies notice you. If you are feeling like you are burnt out and tired of applying to jobs, then take time off of this. It's better to do quality over quantity in this sense that if you're like, I just can't apply to more today or I just don't feel like it today, then don't. Don't just continue pushing forward, but versus taking time off, relaxing, it's not gonna set you back. What it will do is when you are actually applying, take time and apply to each job with thought and with care. Include those keywords, it's so, vital. This isn't new. This isn't something that you haven't heard before, but so often do we actually just brush it off when in turn, it can be the make or breaking point of if you get that first interview. Also, as a side note, what I used to do when I was applying to jobs, if there was a company that I was super interested in and I knew there'd be a lot of competition, I would send off my resume and cover letter and then I would also send them a LinkedIn message. So the hiring recruiter and then sometimes even one or two other people, it shows you're very eager, which is not a bad thing. And saying, I just sent off my resume and cover letter. I'm very interest interested in this position and here is why. And this will really show them that you are someone who isn't afraid to take initiative, that you're actually really interested in the company that they are working at and you care about it. You position yourself in a place that you stand out from the crowd. At the very least, they will take time to look through your resume. Also, make sure to include your resume again in that message. Number three on this list is not using your network. And don't give me this excuse of, Tiff, I don't have a network. I don't know anyone in the tech industry because guess what? I didn't either before I broke into it. So how did I manage to do it? I made a network and that's what you need to do too. Just reach out to people on LinkedIn. You know, I know it's terrifying, I know it's scary, and I know it sucks. It's not fun putting yourself in these vulnerable situations where it's just like, can I connect over virtual coffee? Or, you know, I love what you're doing, like let's connect. It's just, it sucks, it's not fun. And if you think it's fun, I wish I had that uh, emotion or skill because I don't think it's fun at all. But it's how you see results quickly is through connecting and building relationships with other. And even if you feel like you don't have any direct contacts within the tech industry or for the role you are applying for, that is okay. What I think is the best thing to do then is to start sharing with others. You are looking for a job, looking for a role in tech, whatever specific one it is. And more often than not, through just engaging in these conversations with your friends to be like, oh, my, you know, my cousin of a cousin or whatever the case is, they work in tech. Why don't you connect with them? So start really thinking about your network and utilizing it because if you are just sitting there and applying for jobs without reaching out to others, it's going to be a longer haul typically in finding your job versus if you're actually using your connections or potential connections. The last one on the list is trying to memorize and have everything perfect for your first phone call. And this oftentimes I see happen that we take advice too far where we, you know, be prepared, practice your answers. Okay, yes, have answers prepared, be, you know, on top of your game, but you don't want to become to the point where you're in the initial screening call and you sound like a robot. You're just listing off your answers and it's obvious that you are just, mem you memorized answers and are just saying them. 
And I think part of the thing is, even if you aren't applying for a technical role, people hire people. They don't just hire skills. And you can push back and say this isn't true, and maybe in some instances it isn't the full truth, but people on average want good people to work for them, to work with good people. And if that means hiring someone who's very authentic and real, has a great personality and is a team player, more likely than not, companies will hire that person over someone who might be more, a bit more qualified skillfully, but has no sign of wanting to work together in teams or be friendly. Because skills can be taught, skills can be learned over time. And if you have someone who maybe is a little bit less skilled technically, but has a lot more eagerness and willingness to grow, I don't know about you, but I'd rather hire and work for that person versus someone who maybe currently has more skills, but it seems very stagnant. So going back to not memorizing your answers, when you're going on these phone calls, yes, have things prepared, but don't be a robot. Be authentic and be truthful. If they ask you a question and you don't know the answer, that is okay. Just be honest, be, you know, and it might be something where you're just, you should know the answer and you're a bit nervous. Now, in the initial phone calls, uh, screening interviews are not going to necessarily ask technical questions, but what they will do is they might ask you how much you know about this technology or what your experience is with this. And if you stumble or get caught up on some sections, just take a step back and be honest. Say, hey, you know what? I really wanna work for X company and I'm kinda nervous right now. I usually know how to answer this, but I'm feeling a little nervous. Let me get back to you on this at the end of the interview. Could you ask me it again? It gives you some time to collect yourself, recollect your thoughts, continue on with the conversation, that by the end of the conversation, you're feeling more comfortable having spoken to them for a while, that it's easier to revisit this question that you were having some difficulties with. Okay, those are the top four common mistakes that I have not only seen, but have personally made, and I wish I had advice along. A lot of these, actually all of them pretty much, are is advice that goes against what is typically told. I think I gave a lot of advice here that goes against the grain because sometimes we take this advice too seriously and we need to step back and actually go the opposite way, which I just shared with you today. I hope you found these tips really valuable and helpful, not only if you are just starting out in your tech career, but no matter where you're at in your journey, I think interviewing is something that is terrifying at all stages, or at least for me it is. I don't like interviewing and I like talking to people, but it's one of those things that the more you practice, the better you will get at it and just be yourself because at the end of the day, you wanna work for someone who really values and respects your true self. All right, that is it for today. Leave in the comments any questions you have. I always answer every single one of your questions and comments, or I try my best to and take time to read them all because there's really nothing more that I care about than supporting you and your career growth and your personal growth because you all mean a lot to me and I've been in your shoes and I'm still in your shoes depending on maybe you're more advanced than me. And we gotta do it together. It's one of the best things. We gotta lift each other up, support each other, and I hope I can do that for you. So any questions, thoughts, comments, leave in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. I think that's it. I think I covered it all. Okay, I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.